Okay, so it's time to finally get some barbed wire on these H braces. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today, it is March 8th, 2020. So we're really trying to get all of our fencing done. We wanna to get to planting this spring and we only have a couple weeks left. Now, if you've been following along, we've been covering how we're gonna get the farm fenced so we can keep cattle from getting inside the farm and getting to all of our planting and growing areas. So what we're doing today is we're actually gonna be installing the barbed wire fencing on our age break. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over a list of supplies, but before I do that, let's talk a little bit about the area that we're working in today. So here we are, we're actually at the very front of the farm. Where I'm at here specifically, this is the northwest corner, our property marker is right there, and the main entrance here to the back of the farm is what you see behind me. So we've got two H braces set here, one slanted to allow for kind of more easy movement into the back of the farm. We will have heavier equipment and deliveries that will come back here and head all the way back to the back of the farm. I'm not sure whether or not you can make it out, but we have a couple sets of H braces here about 350 feet or so down, and then our corner posts all the way back about just over 600 feet down, which is the property line. So real easy to make out this road here. There will be a gate here between these two H braces that are gonna seal this section off here, and then we will go across the front of front of the property here and we'll show you that in another video. So what we're working on today is we're working on uh, the actual barbed wire going from in this H brace here to the center point of the farm where we kind of deviate and cross the farm with barbed wire. So one more disclaimer, we've said it before, but this is the first time we've ever done this. <laughs> so you're watching rookies do barbed wire for the first time. Obviously, YouTube University is my go-to for learning everything. Probably why some of you are here, but we're not pros when it comes to this part, that's for sure. <laughs> so please keep that in mind. But we're gonna go ahead and go over the list of supplies that we're gonna be working on to get this barbed wire stretched today. Okay, so we have everything loaded up into the truck because obviously we're dealing with about a 350 foot run here. We wanna be able to just basically drop and go. So you'll see us doing that here in a moment. As far as supplies, obviously barbed wire. So we covered that in our supply video. I'll go ahead and link that for you here. But what we have is two of the six rolls or so of barbed wire. That is two point barbed wire, 12 and a half gauge, pretty standard stuff from Tractor Supply. That's our barbed wire. We do have a fin stretcher. This is the Goldenrod 415. I believe I have this linked in our Amazon shop. We like this one because it has a floating arm that'll allow us to basically infinitely stretch barbed wire without having to use a come along. So we have that. I've got uh, basically one of those little twists here for our clips because we have six foot T-posts that we'll be putting in the ground every 12 feet. Uh, so we have those there. This is obviously gonna be used to attach our fence clips when we get to that point today. And then we have a couple of wooden posts. So the wooden posts, we're gonna have spray, spaced out evenly. They'll replace a couple of our T-posts every 100 feet or so, just to make sure it got a little more visibility and a little more stability in that long run of barbed wire. So got a couple of those. Now size, this is a four, five, Five post, which means it's between four and five inches in diameter. So that's what we have here. We'll cut those down to size. We only want them five feet tall, same as the T posts. So we will put a hole in the ground, get these guys in there and tamped in. And then fence stays, we talked about that as well. So we have that 12 foot stretch between our T posts. So every four feet between those T posts, we'll be placing a fence stay. So that way we have a fence stay at four and eight feet. And then of course the posts at zero and 12, it'll make more sense when we get to it. Now, in addition to that, we did go ahead and buy a T post driver. So we have a gas powered T post driver here. I'll see if it's still in Amazon. I'll link it for you guys. Uh, we tried it out last night. We're works pretty good. We got a whole lot of T-posts to put in the ground and we'll be doing T-posts all over the place here on the farm. So we'll get plenty of use out of that. We'll be giving that a shot today for the first time as well. So these are our primary supplies. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get to our anchor point and beginning of our first line of barbed wire. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that. 
Okay, so here we are at our first H brace here at the front of the farm. So first thing we need to do is we need to mark out where we're gonna have each one of the barbed wire start here on this anchor brace. So as far as measurements, we figured out that the top of our T on our six foot T post is about 14 inches from the bottom, which is gonna give us a T post of just under five feet as far as the above ground height. We also know that we want to have that top wire about six inches down from the top. The T-posts have a marking and so that uh, top piece, you'll see it when we're laying them out, is a different color and that's about six inches, right on six inches. So we're going to have that top wire be just underneath that as far as the spacing on the T-posts. So essentially what we're doing as far as our total spacing, the bottom wire will be at about 12 inches off the ground and then we'll have 10 inch spacing approximately between each of the subsequent wires up to the top of the post. So we're gonna go ahead and make our measurements now and get our first barbed wire attached to the bottom row. Okay, so we got all that measured out. Nikki, thanks for the help. That was fantastic. <laughs> so we got our markings. Went ahead and measured and verified. So we're 12 inches off the ground here, 10, foot, 10 inch spacing between each of the top of these. Now our posts here are five feet up. So I did come eight inches off the top. That's gonna give us six inches off of our T posts that are two inches short of this. So now what we need to do is go ahead and get our bottom wire attached here and then take the wire all the way down to the next H brace, get that bottom wire placed so we can space out all of our T posts. Okay, so Austin and I were able to get this barbed wire down here. So we're at the end of the stretch. Austin's gonna go pick up the truck right now. But what I wanna do is wanna kinda give you a close up real quick, show you guys how this Goldenrod 415 worked. Okay, so here's a closer up view on kinda how this works. So I have this anchored back here on the post. You can see we've got this marked off. So I've got my 12 inch line right here. So that's where this wire is gonna come up. And you can see I already have slack here to work on this while the tension's being held here. So the way this works is this arm actually free floats. So I'm able to ratchet it back several times to get plenty of tension on here which I have now done so what I'm gonna do to get this handle out of my way is I'm just gonna come back here like this I have this hooked here and then that will release and grab on my second hook to the front which is right here so now that's holding on I get that out of my way and now I'm able to actually work with this with tension on the line I'm able to work with this and go ahead and get us anchored on this side so I'm gonna go ahead and get this done and come back to you
Okay, so you can see we've, we've got our first wire stretched here. So I've got my 12 inch spacing, so my one foot spacing. That's gonna really give enough gap here, primarily to let bunnies and that kind of stuff get under here without getting caught up in this. Remember, our goal is to keep cattle out from the growing part of the farm to keep them from eating that to a nub. So we got our 12 inch wire set here. So now what we need to do, got plenty of tension on it, but not overly tensioned. What we need to do is head back to the front, do the same thing up front to make sure we've got our 12 inch spacing set and then come back through and set T-post. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we have all the T posts placed and we did go back. We dropped in our four or five posts. We wound up going, I believe it was the ninth post and the 18th post. We swapped those out. That basically broke this up into thirds. So every 100 feet or so, we have a wooden post. So now what Austin and I are gonna do, we're gonna get a hole dug here, a hole dug down there, get these cut, put in place, and come back to you before we start getting all the T posts down in the ground because that'll be that T post driver. So we got those posts in. So you can see we got our two posts that are basically giving us an even spread uh, from the rest of the wooden posts. It'll reinforce the fence a little bit. The fence is designed to give, so that way an animal pushes up against it, it'll give a little bit. This will give some stability throughout the fence. And then obviously we can go ahead and put in staples now to get this barbed wire up off the ground, make it easier for us to go ahead and work with the rest of the T posts. So we got this one here. We've got a secondary one placed down there. So at this point, I think we're ready to go ahead and take a look at that t-post driver so before we get to that we're going to go ahead and put a staple here at 12 inches get this thing up off the ground in two spots come back in and drive in these t-posts okay so we're ready to go ahead and use this new t-post driver you can hear we got it warming up in the background austin's hanging on to that so we've got our six foot t posts so the goal right now is to get them just past the t which will stabilize the post itself and we'll get it right on the side of the barbed wire that way we can attach the barbed wire when we come back so we have 25 t posts to go we're going to see how this thing does and how long it takes us to get this done so i think we're warmed up ready to go Okay, so it just took us 20 minutes to put 25 T posts in the ground. So less than a minute per post with this little guy here. I'll tell you what, we have both this pile driver, so the T post driver, as well as our auger are both from the same company. It's called Extreme Power. I'm gonna go, go ahead and plug them now because the auger has done an amazing bang up job getting through our hard, hard dirt. And you guys just watched us put 25 T posts into the ground in 20 minutes with this little guy here. So very, very good products. The one thing I can tell you, it, they're just not always available. 
available. So I'm gonna go ahead and link it if I can find it, but just did an amazing job. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put our T-post clips, get our bottom wire set, so we can go and actually get to the next section of the farm and lay that out as well while we have the help today. So we're gonna come back to you. We may actually have this done because we've got multiple wires here to go ahead and pull, but we wanna get some actual work done and try to scramble a little bit so we're done for this day and have two sides of this farm done. Okay, so we're pretty much done with the perimeter. At least the first line of barbed wire is done. I'm gonna apologize now, we got uh, storm blowing in again, so a little breezy. But if Lori wants to pan down this way, you can see we've got our T-post set on this back run, which basically cuts our five acre main parcel uh, in about two thirds. So we got the front two thirds that we're gonna be working with as far as growing. And then of course we have this back area here we're gonna go ahead and leave open to the free range cattle for now. So what we're gonna do, we have Nikki and Austin here with this for a couple more hours. We want to get all of our barbed wire run. We figure if we at least get the first three to four rows, we should be in good shape. So we're going to see how much we can get done. We're going to start on that far side. As soon as we're done, we'll come back and show you where we're at for today. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for today. So we're here at the front of the farm, give you an idea of what we got accomplished today. We're gonna go ahead and put it on pause. We may do a few things this week, but let's show you what we got to today. First thing, we're right here at the front of the farm. You can see we got three strands of wire here. Now what we wound up doing, instead of trying to complete this run because we had done that cross uh, section across the farm, we wanted to make sure we had at least three feet of barbed wire here. That way it wasn't confusing to anybody wanting to either ride a quad through here or of course cattle. We don't want them stepping over a single wire. So we decided to go ahead and do three feet of wire here. We did three feet of wire across the center of the farm as well. So with that, we're not gonna be able to get any stays in here today. But what we did find obviously is we started to go from one strand, two strands, three strands, we got much more efficient at laying the wire itself and attaching the wire. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick at that cross section going across the farm. Okay, so here we are at that midpoint, which is about two thirds of the way back on the farm. So you get an idea of this cross area here where we go across the farm. So I think that turned out really good. We're finding that as far as spacing on our T-posts is we're having to adjust up or down. And you know, first time again, fencing for us, we've got some areas where it's a little higher or a little lower, so it's a little off. Now the area this way, if Lori wants to pan down this, this area, so this is our main drive in. So you can see well-defined now for us on this side. Now you can see with these uh, T-posts or with the uh, white PVC, that is designations for the folks that own this land here. And my understanding is it's a family that wants to build homes for each one of their family members. So they're gonna be using each one of these acreages. The hope that we have is that they're gonna decide on whatever fencing they want, but it'll be consistent all the way back, which is kind of nice. So we realize that this fencing here is truly going to be temporary. So we're not gonna go back and try to make this perfect. We still need to add a couple strands at the top, but for the most part, we're not too concerned with exactly how this looks because again, this is probably gonna wind up being temporary and we wanna be able to pull it back out. So as soon as they decide on this fencing, we're gonna yank this back out. Now, if Lori wants to pound down that way, this is obviously the cross for the farm itself. Now, right now, the idea is you can see the wood chip pile back there. We have our free range cattle that have a tendency to come through. Now, we wanna make sure that we keep them out of here. So everything behind me would be the growing area. You can see our wood chip pile here. They do like to kind of play around in that, get the uh, stumps out of there. It's kind of nice. And we love it because they urine and put manure down on it, which helps it break down. So it's breaking down fantastic. And we're gonna to continue to get wood chip deliveries. We've gotten a couple this week. 
and that'll continue happening. So now what they're going to do is just can basically fill this in with wood chips and obviously if we can keep up we're going to try as we start to plant. But we've got this area blocked off now uh, once we get the gate in here to make sure that we don't have cattle coming into the growing area but we don't mind if they're in here for now because at some point in time we'll have our own cattle in this section. So we want to make sure that this area here is set really well. So we will come back and make sure we have nice straight lines here. We've got barbed wire that looks really good. And again, eventually it'll keep the cattle from our own cattle from coming in onto the growing area. Obviously we have work to do still. This is really just gonna be part one of our barbed wire. Still have stays we need to get in because we got a couple strands we still need to do. And of course we still have a whole section over there and a cross section coming across the front of the property. We also have the contractor that's gonna come in and put in some metal, uh, basically like a ranch style fence across the front of the property. So we're gonna do some different things up there. Still have a little bit of catch up to do on barbed wire. So we got another day of barbed wire. And of course we do need to get those stays in as well. So I think this is going to wind up being part one of setting barbed wire, but you know what? We got to stay down. We've got some fencing up and you know what? For rookies, I think it looks pretty good. So I just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see here on the YouTube channel. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Okay, so it's time for the next in our series of fencing. That's up next. That's next. Too much, too much next. And we're coming to you here today. It is March 8th, 2020. It is March 8th, 2020, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to come back to you and uh, make sure that this works. <laughs> you to shut it down. It's going down. It's going down. This isn't working. Try and get a little lower with on our barbed wire, which is going to allow. You got it? <laughs> Austin is always loud. Well, this is good. It's a beautiful day. A little overcast and cloudy. Don't even need the glasses anymore. Here we go. I can see the light. I can hear the sounds. It's like birds chirping in the air or barbed wire scraping against the truck bed. Nothing quite like it. Yeah. And now the sun's back out again. All right. Okay. <laughs> Keep <laughs> <in> the ground. <laughs> done and done. <laughs>